has been that way. I mean, even looking over to Global, Donna Friesen is there at the helm. This is an amazing and exciting time in broadcast television in Canada right now when it comes to women and, and the jobs that we're holding. Having said that, you know, there have been some watershed moments through the years. There was a news editor who I think, you know, now I would thank him if I saw him on the street who said to me, you don't have what it takes, kid. You don't have the look. Yeah, and I don't know what that means. You know, you don't have the look. You don't have what we need. You don't have the, and, and really, it was his voice in my head through all the years that, that pushed me that made me move when I didn't want to move or couldn't take another step and made me strive. And I really would thank him to this day. I call it the power of no. And I've done speeches on this. You know, those people who say, no, you can't. And at that time, I remember it was CTV Toronto walking into that newsroom and it was a sea of men. A sea of men. I believe Christine Bentley, my colleague, uh, was the only woman in, in some sort of position of power at that time. Things have changed drastically. I call it, we talk about it all the time, this is an amazing time for women in broadcast. Could things get better? Absolutely. Could we be more diverse on so many other levels? Absolutely. We mentioned and touched on it a little earlier, but you know, I think it's vital that we represent what this country looks like. How can we have a newsroom that tells the stories that need to be told and informs Canadians the way they need to be informed if we don't represent what this country looks like and we don't represent this country's ideals? So we still have a far, far, far way to go, I think, on that aspect. But in so many other aspects, we have hit, you know, some huge milestones. We most certainly have. So broadcast is, broadcast is doing pretty well. Vivian and company. <laughs> I'm taking notes here. Look at me. Um, so what comes up for the rest of the panelists who are in, in uh, dreary old print? Uh, when you hear that excitement and those numbers and the, and the, um, the experiences uh, that Marcy's just shared. I think it's brilliant. But I also think that things are changing in the print journalism as well. We've got... At our paper, we have a deputy editor who is a female, and then I, and that has, our whole boardroom has changed because of that. I remember being the only female in the boardroom, and now there are three or four. So it's, there's a big difference. And I think at the executive level, there are a number of women in the boardroom there as well. So things are changing. I always like to quote Kim Campbell, our prime minister, uh, because she talked about how everyone who goes forward, and Marcy, you're an inspiration. You were up there pregnant and everything. It was awesome. Yeah, it was all out there. <laughs> um, every woman that goes ahead creates an island of credibility for the women to follow. And I just think that's a brilliant way of putting it because every time we do step forward, there's another someone who looks and goes, I could do that someday, and I think that's working, and I do think that critical mass is coming. So. Anybody else have a response, uh, Kelly? i just point out that <clears throat> in new media and online, um, women have taken leadership roles really early there. I hope that, that, that they hold those and build on those, um, but that also is, is quite encouraging to me. Anyone else on that topic? Sure. Emma? I'll weigh in. I mean, it is, um, it is very encouraging uh, being sort of on the beginning of the, the career end to hear things like this because it's, you know, I, I get sort of bogged down in all of this stuff like, can I do this? Can I have this? Can I be this? And uh, again, as I said before, sometimes it, it just sort of depends on, on my mood or whether I've had a difficult day or, you know, uh, I... It's interesting uh, having having female colleagues in the newsroom and having female colleagues in senior positions in the newsroom is so important for so many ways, not only because you see people that you can say, okay, I, I like what she's doing. I think she's got a really good balance and I, she's great at her job. She seems to love her kids. She goes away with her friends for the weekend. And, you know, I, I see her and I think, okay, like I can do that and work here. So I think that that's, uh, that's really, really helpful and really motivating. And... Uh, Again, it's just it's it's nice to be able to see that you can do it, and even if, as Margot says, you have to make choices, then potentially you, you can do it, but just not potentially all at once. So yeah, it's 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 interesting and, and encouraging. 
Yeah, and I think the, the critical mass thing is, is a crucial part of, of where we should be headed because uh, I can think of a newspaper, for example, where there was a woman who was the editor-in-chief and um, there was a woman who was her um, city editor, but there was no managing editor, and a woman who was the online editor, and within a year, I guess, person, one of the people I'm staring at her right now, um, they were all gone to other, uh, to um, the Edmonton Journal <laughs> and to, uh, and to uh, public relations for a university. And, and now those top three jobs of, of the Times colonists are, are men, are, there are men in those jobs. So that critical mass piece I think is really, really important to have um, the choice to have all kinds of diversity in those jobs available to, to be in them. Since, since I will say 